We are in Holland, a serene little country with about 12,000 miles of picturesque canals and waterways. Peacefully winding in and around and into the pastures and farmlands, cities and towns, all redundant with more and more wholesome things. The innumerable waterways in this colorful land provide an excellent means of transportation. And in wintertime, when frozen salt become excellent routes for traffic on sleds and skates, the most charming scenes during the milder seasons, when the attractive dairy maids quietly roll forth in their boots to collect the daily supply of milk from various little scenes along their routes. And then wrested from the sea by Dutch annuity and labor. Now consists of cultivated fields and grain, a long portion used for vegetables. This bovine paradise is only natural that agriculture should be a leading industry, making Holland famous for its prize-winning catholics, not the least of which is the celebrated Edam cheese, made in the rich polder district surrounding the ancient town of Alkmaar. When prepared for the local market, the cheese is rolled into balls, which apparently are not damaged by the bouncing they take as they fall upon the pavement. Every Friday is market day at Alkmaar, where the farmers and merchants assemble from all parts of Northern Holland for the purpose of buying and selling cheese. A small sample is usually tasted by the buyer. And if it satisfies him, negotiations are entered into, whereby the buyer emphasizes his bid by briskly slapping the seller's hand, as illustrated here. A custom dating back through the centuries. Three slaps mean a sale, and it is just as binding as a written contract. Cheese is one of Holland's chief sources of food, and it is said to be a major factor in the longevity and health of the native people. Uniform cheese porters elected to a position for life by their fellow citizens wear colored straw hats indicating the guild to which they belong. They carry their precious cargoes in traditional wooden cradles to the scales contained in the ancient weighhouse, where cheeses have been weighed for almost four centuries. Although the wages are not very high and the work is laborious, the position of cheese carrier is highly esteemed. Following the weighing formality, the balls of cheese are placed in troughs and rolled to vehicles and boats for transport to the factories, where they are cleaned and wrapped in airtight cellophane for their journey to the markets of the world. Remotely situated in the northeastern section of the province of Utrecht, on the shores of the Zyder Zee, or the Eiffel Meer, as it is now called, is the colorful little village of Spockenburg where most of the inhabitants are engaged in the fishing industry or its allied branches. Although the reclamation of land from the Zyder Zee was undoubtedly a tremendous boon for the farmers, it had certain disadvantages for many of the fishermen, who were literally placed on dry land and forced to turn to farming for a livelihood. But old Spockenburg, however, escaped this fate, and it still remains as one of the most quaint little fishing villages in all of Holland. Verily, we are now far from the madding crowd, where the pageantry of yesterday is still a living reality and the amenities of life are simple, wholesome, and pleasant. Practically every district in this part of the country has its own style of costume, so definitely defined that a student of authentic Dutch costumes can name each town or district by the attire of the inhabitants. Spockenburg is especially noted for the unique worn by its women, and they are not dressed for the benefit of tourists, for visitors from the outside world are not as common here as they are in other parts of Holland. Owing to the absence of men, Spockenburg appears to be a woman's domain, and this is probably because the men spend most of their daylight hours at sea in fishing boats. To us, the women appear like the living models of the old Dutch masters, whose paintings have preserved on canvas such faces as we see here in real life. Hoorn is another typically Dutch provincial town on the Zyder Zee. Although the little village of about 13,000 inhabitants is now known as a dead city, it is steeped in history and possesses many remains of a glorious past when it was a commercial town of considerable importance. 
But, the, but at the end of the 18th century, a period of stagnation and decline set in. By different causes, trade and navigation disappeared. The institutions were abolished, and many old monuments were destroyed. An interesting old landmark dating back to the days when Bourne was at the height of his career is this typical example of 17th century architecture. En route to the little village of Stopwurst, we meet an obliging couple who have donned this attire to show us the traditional wedding garments worn by their parents. Hats like this are still worn by the more conservative peasantry on special occasions. Perhaps the most unique headdress to be seen in this charming country is that worn by the younger mothers and children of Stophorst. Somehow this part of Holland impresses us as a living page from the past when life was less complicated and the wants of man were much more simple. While mother performs her domestic chores with little daughter at her, as her companion, father and son work side by side in the fields. When we compare the density of population in Holland, which is about one person per acre of ground with the United States, where there are approximately 100 acres for every seven persons, it is easy to realize why the Netherlands is constantly seeking means and ways to increase the yield of its soil. After the toil of the day, a favorite diversion is a bicycle ride along the level country roads. Holland is a land of small properties, and consequently a truly democratic spirit has taken hold of the country. As there is no abject poverty, there is an atmosphere of comfort, peace, and com contentment everywhere. Prior to the last World War, the stork was a very conspicuous bird in Holland. But during the food shortages caused by the recent war, all of the storks, it is said, were either eaten or frightened away. So now nothing remains to commemorate their memory except the deserted stork nests on the roof of the farmhouses. Nevertheless, the absence of the stork has had no effect on the baby population. As a matter of fact, there has been a tremendous increase in the birth rate since Mr. Stark vanished from the land. And here is a good example of the rising generation that is now blessing Holland with great promises for the future. And it is with this thought that we most reluctantly say, farewell to colorful Holland.